Shares of SoFi hit a 52-week low on Monday, but there's actually some bullish news behind the company, and that is that the CEO, Anthony Noto, actually bought shares in the open market late last week. Now, executives sell shares for all kinds of reasons. You might get stock-based compensation, you need to pay some taxes. If a large percentage of your compensation is based on earning stock, whether that's options or restricted stock units, it may actually be a way to fund your life. But insiders and executives only buy stock for one reason, and it's when they're bullish on a company's long-term future. So Noto buying shares on the open market, I think was a very good sign for SoFi and makes me even more bullish on the company. And the interesting thing is that the stock is going in the wrong direction as I think the business is going in the right direction. So I like that combination as a long-term investor. But I'm gonna dig into exactly what we found out late last week and some of the recent results. My name is Travis Hoyam. Thanks for watching Asymmetric Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all my content. And thanks to this video sponsor, The Motley Fool. If you go to fool.com slash ASYM, they'll give you their top 10 stocks to buy right now. So let's look at some of the recent SEC filings. This is the Form 4 that insiders have to file with the SEC when they make transactions, whether it's an acquisition or what they call a disposition or a sale of stock. And what you can see here is that on the 14th of June, Noto bought 30,715 shares, acquired shares, for an average price of $6.48. This is all direct ownership, and he now owns or controls 8.1 million shares of stock. Now, a 30,000 unit acquisition of stock isn't the biggest number, but like I said, an insider or an executive buying any amount of stock is a sign that they are long-term bullish on the company because typically you're gonna see insiders actually sell stock. And we actually saw that this week. There were some insiders who sold shares that they actually earned as part of their compensation. So this is another filing with the SEC form 144. You can see that this compensation was 152,000 shares and that was immediately sold for a value of just less than a million dollars. This was Jer Jeremy Rochelle. We see the same thing from Robert Levitt about $31,000 worth of stock sales, and that is compensation, which was restricted stock units, so vested restricted stock units. Sold all of that immediately. Here's the third one, Derek White, sold about 444,000 shares of restricted stock that vested, and then turned around and sold that immediately. So this is another case of insiders getting vested stock options, RSUs, and when they actually vest, they look at this as compensation. So they're gonna sell it immediately and take the cash. We have also seen the Qatar Investment Authority. This is, I think, the bigger reason that shares have been dropping recently is that they have been a selling a significant amount of stock. You can see 19.8 million shares of stock, and this was transactions on the 13th of June, average price of $6.78 per share. So this is a long-term investor who is selling stock, and that at least should raise some red flags. What I think offset that to me is that the CEO is buying stock. So an institutional investor like this Qatar fund maybe isn't the best judge of the future for SoFi. The CEO, I would take his word a little bit more. And why is Noto so bullish on the company? Well, I think there's a few reasons. Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash ASYM for the top 10 stocks to buy right now. The first thing I want to show is SoFi's revenue and net income. You can see that revenue has grown really sharply, compound annual growth rate of 27% since 2017. The company is still losing money, $178 million on a net income basis over the past 12 months. So what's behind those numbers? Well, this is a look at, in light blue, is the lending revenue. So this is going to be the traditional lending to student loan borrowers, to personal loans now growing more in mortgages more traditional banking services. That business has grown tremendously, but over the past year, management's actually pulled that back a little bit. They're being a little bit more conservative with who they're lending out to. They've talked about this a lot, and I think this is where investors are getting a little bit impatient because they wanna see more growth. But what SoFi is essentially doing is saying, well, we could grow more, but we don't wanna take risk that's unnecessary. They were actually one of the earlier companies to say, hey, we don't think that interest rates are gonna come down later this year. That turned out to be absolutely the right move. They've also had some questions about the economy. We will see how that plays out. But taking less risk and still growing your business is a very good position to be in. And that's because 
they are continuing to grow their technology and financial services business at a very rapid rate. Since 2020, the compound annual growth rate for the technology business is 51% and the financial services business is 217%. So those two businesses right there are really, I think, the future driver of the company. These are businesses that can scale in a much more effective way than you can scale a lending business where you're going to have to where you're going to have to line up borrowers, you're going to have to line up financing for those borrowers, you're ultimately taking risk. These kind of businesses like technology and financial services, you are just taking a skim basically on all of the businesses that go along with that. So you're facilitating other companies offering banking solutions with the technology platform. Financial services side, you're doing all the things that brokers do. So you're making money on margin, you're making money on short sales, you're making money on IPOs. There's all kinds of things you can do without ultimately taking a lot of risk on the balance sheet if you're in both of those businesses. So those are still growing, but the contribution margin from both are still pretty low. So you can see that here, the technology business does have contribution profit, $110.7 million in the last 12 months. The financial services also has swung to a contribution profit, but those numbers are relatively modest compared to the operating expenses that it costs to run the business. And that's ultimately why SoFi is not net income positive quite yet. But I think the, but I think the bottom line with SoFi is that this is a digital first business. When you think about the banking industry, there's so much money that is spent on building branches, on hiring people who work in those branches and call centers, all the kinds of things that go into the physical infrastructure of the banking industry. SoFi has said it wants to be one of the top 10 banks in size in the United States, and it's a completely digital bank. So that should have a much lower cost structure. That's something that a lot of these traditional banks just can't compete with. So I think what Noto is seeing is that the strategy is working. The long-term strategy is working. Yes, maybe a quarter or even a year's revenue growth on the lending side isn't what the market is expecting. But if the strategy is to build this digital behemoth and this digital bank, that seems to be going extremely well with not only the lending business being profitable, but also with technology and financial services. And as both of those latter two businesses grow, they should be able to scale at a very rapid rate. Nobody knows more about how the business is doing and executing in those or in those two areas than Noto does. And if he is bullish on the company and he's putting his own money, not just RSUs and stock options, but stock he's actually buying in the open market, if he's putting that money to work, then that I think is a very bullish sign for the company long term. So I think SoFi is really well positioned. I know that the market kind of goes back and forth on what investors think about this company specifically, but I see as a long term investor, somebody who's looking to hold this stock five, 10, 15 years from now. This is going to be the kind of company who is going to be very profitable in the future of lending and all of the technology and services that go around that. So this is a stock that I own. I'm looking to add more, especially at these lower prices. And I think if the CEO is bullish, then that is a very bullish sign for investors. But well, what do you think? Leave your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to Asymmetric Investing. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time.